What's up, After Buzzers? Welcome back to the 100 After Show. Today we're going to be talking about Season 5, Episodes 12 and 13, Damocles Parts 1 and 2. McQuarrie is protecting his unborn child, Clark is protecting her adoptive commander child, and Monty and Harper are protecting their teenage child? What? We're going to be discussing all of this and more, so stay tuned. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Oh, this is not the live music. There you go. Yes, the end of the world. As we know it. Again. 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 Literally, I feel like the end of every season, but no complaints. Again. It makes for some great. Twisted finales. What is up, you guys? We're on the season five finale. I feel like this went by so fast. If you don't already know by now, I'm your host, Taylor Gates, and I'm joined by two lovely panelists tonight. What's up, Taylor? I'm Jorge Bayo. Hey, it's me, Cherry. What's up? Mm -hmm. All right, so obviously we had some technical difficulties last week, which made us unable to talk about the first part. So we are going to just be streamlining it and talking about both tonight. So guys, what were your overall thoughts on both of them combined? It was a pretty epic two-parter. Yes, definitely epic, man. And uh, I loved your opening. Yes, will someone please think of the children? <laughs> My God, what Everyone's happened? Everyone's thinking yeah. of the children. Except for little Ethan, J- Jaha's kid. Yeah. Right? R.I.P. <laughs> Ethan. Cherry, uh, what do you think? <laughs> I was blown away. It was such a good setup. It really brought everyone together, the whole crew is all together, and it really set up what was going to be happening with Maddie and Octavia, and I was surprised season two. I'm not going to say anything about part two, though. No, I totally agree. I thought, like you said, it was a really good setup, and it pulled off a pretty great twist. Honestly, sometimes shows, I'm like, "Mm, that was a little too sudden, didn't make a lot of sense. This one made a lot of sense, and it went in a direction I wasn't exactly expecting, and it was was a really fun watch. I was gasping, and I had goosebumps, and it was a fun, it was a fun time, especially the second part. So, let's start off by talking about the first part. So, one crew seems seems to be in pretty good shape at the beginning there. Everything's kind of going according to plan. Echo's sort of telling everyone where to fire. It seems like they're kind of moving out. Uh, Octavia's giving the troops a go-ahead. Did you guys think it was going to be that easy, or did you see something coming? Oh, yeah. I mean, (laughs) well, well, the the episode previous to that, um, Kane, Benedict Kane. Benedict (laughs) Kane. You know, and, uh, and, uh, and the colonel, like, gave themselves up to McCreary, right? Yeah. And they gave away the goods, so the we goods. knew that something bad was going to happen there. It's very true. So McCreary's team obviously ambushes them, mm. which R.I.P. Ethan, like we said again, that poor <laughs> kid got like two lines. I really thought he was going to come back into play. He kind of didn't. He kind of just poof. He, he was gone. Like, I'm a soldier. Bam. Oh, In no the front lines when he's like nine. Whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Um, it's a tough life being one crew, though. It, yeah, is. it is. He'll be with Jaha now, though. It's reassuring. Yeah, yeah oh. that's nice. Um, people are like, yo, let's retreat. And, of course, Octavia's not about to retreat because that's not how Octavia rolls. Nope. Um, and then so there's a huge explosion. We have no idea, you know, what kind of it's going to happen. Right. Um, but we find Octavia and Bellamy kind of playing dead while everyone's getting shot around them. Which was terrifying to watch, yes. you know, laying on the ground while everyone else is right. getting Right, first shot there was at. one that was the, the 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 one girl. I forgot her character's name, but she got up and was heading straight for for Blood Raina, and yeah. bam, bam, taken out. Can't do it. They told her to lay mm-hmm. down, but the shock of the moment. And I have to say, I don't know if I'd been able to sit right. still. I'd be like, <laughs> it's fight or flight, right. and it's automatic to try and run and just lay there. It's hard. But I thought that was really good, and it was a reminder of, I'm still mad at Bellamy, mm. but he does love Octavia, mm. but I think the relationship is never really going to be the same. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely going to be changed, whether it gets repaired or not. I, I think you're right. I think that it's always going to be kind of fundamentally different. I did think that was a really smart move, having those two kind of be in that situation, just from a writing standpoint, because they literally can't get away from each other, yes. and right. it is life or death. So I thought that was like a kind of a cool way to get them to have to communicate. What, what, to talk. They also, to talk. what was up with that moment with Octavia blaming Bellamy? <laughs> you know, she's like, so this was all your fault. Uh, no. It was partially his fault because when they came down he was supposed to call up at Raven mm-hmm. in intervals and if the 
new Sky Crew people were not following along with the lines, she was supposed to kill everybody that was in uh, suspended animation. But he was so busy making cow eyes at Clark that uh, he he just didn't, he never called her. Yeah, but I mean, Octavia was the one that burned the crops and made everybody march when they didn't have to. Yes, but agree. Would they really want to stay in the bunker area after the dark year of having to eat people and having those memories constantly in your face? I mean, because Octavia did take all that guilt onto herself. Mm-hmm. I know I wouldn't. I know I'd, I'd be like a scalded cat. I would not want to be there anymore. And I do think it was partially her putting the best interest of one crew and also because she did not want to be in that space anymore. She was mm. raring to get out. I know. I, I think that both of them blame each other for a lot of things. And, of, of course, there's no easy answer. Like, everyone's to blame a little bit. Like, that's just the thing. Like, no one deserves all the blame in the show. I think that's just, like, that's not what the show is. You know what I mean? Everyone's yeah. super complicated and right. contributes to all of it. Abby was a Jimmy Cricket in her ear, egging and pushing her on. This is true. And Abby took no real responsibility. She was, like, in the back the entire time. Why oh, Abby, she's gone through that? a ride what? this season. Uh, well, she was too busy being a junkie. Well, okay, we'll get to that later. <laughs> I, still want to defend, uh, I still want to defend Abby. We'll, we'll get to that um, a little bit later because she had a, a big part um, sort of towards the end of this episode and, oh, yeah. and in the oh, finale. Yes. But in yes. her reunion with Kane, too. That oh, was yeah. a pretty big We, we will get to that because right. that's... That's a, that was a big moment for sure. Um, but so just kind of staying on track with Octavia and Bellamy, they also see Gaia get hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, it brings them together as well as Indra. And I really, like I said, I've said it before, but I love it when those four are kind of together. I think they have a really, really cool dynamic. It was funny that guy was like, Octavia, why are you helping me? Like, a week ago, you wanted all three of us in the pit, which I was like, right. this is a good point. Um, but I like that Octavia is showing little signs of change, um, saying, now you're one crew. You know, a week ago, you were traitors. Now you're one crew. I think that that just shows so much how quickly things and alliances can change on this show. Yes. Um, what do you guys think of Octavia kind of helping Gaia, maybe giving the olive branch a little bit? I, I think it was Octavia finally starting to break down and really look at some of her past mistakes and yeah. see and look around her at this field of blood and her people with no hope. Mm-hmm. And at that time also, she's probably figuring out, well, Bellamy said it as well, you know, nobody's going to follow you. Nobody's going to follow you. Nobody's coming, yeah. right? Um, so it was just the four of them at that point. And then the three, pe- three stooges that got shot too, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. and also... Um, whatever issues you may have with Octavia, she does put usually one crew's best interest mm-hmm. at heart. And what comes right down to it, it's sort of like my philosophy, which I said about Clark. You love the one you're with. You make alliances with the ones who happen to be alive and still there. So mm. That's a good point. Oh, man, Octavia had a rough go of it in that group, though. I mean, Bellamy's like, yo, part of me wishes you were dead. Right. I thought it was really savage when Octavia re- finally realizes she goes one crew is broken I broke it and instead of cuffing her Indra just goes yes, yes you she- did yeah. <laughs> like, Woo! that was a line man yeah. she could deliver those lines and is a tough mom through. she's yeah. a tough mom she strikes me the type that probably will spank the hell out of you as a kid mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I don't know. No, I thought they had some weird true. creativity, like, <laughs> with the grounders. <laughs> it's an interesting way to grow up, I bet. Um, but Gaia is kind of ready. She's like, yo, my fight's over. I don't know why mm. I keep saying yo, but <laughs> I don't know. Because that's how they talk in the future, y'all. Yeah, this is... They're all from Brooklyn. It's like year 3000 <laughs> now. That's, like, kind of how it is. But um, So, Ivan Soto in the chat is saying, so Octavia is gaining redemption. What do you guys think? I agree. I agree. Yeah, I too. agree. I you think know, she's working yeah. through it. She is. I mean, she 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 picked up the gauntlet that at that moment because Indra was going to sacrifice herself for Gaia and for Bellamy, and Gaia was like, "No, you ain't doing that." Um, and so, w- w- what did Octavia do? She stepped up. Yes. You know, yes. and if you are one crew or you are the enemy of one crew, and she stepped up and she protected her her family. 
I love yeah. that moment. That, that was, that was really, 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 really cool. So fearless. Mm-hmm. And I love Octavia. I loved that love moment you, a lot. Octavia. That was really that was really cool. As you know, as many problems I've had with her this season, <laughs> I thought that was a really good way to mm-hmm. show, you know, that she's changing and she's still mm-hmm. willing to sacrifice. So speaking of one crew, let's talk a little bit about where they all are because they're oh. a bit of a mess <laughs> right now. They're fighting with each other. Some people are still mm-hmm. wanting to fight. Some people want to hang back. They have no medical supplies. It's, like I said, it's just kind of a mess. And Echo wants to fight, but Monty says no one will because nobody's in charge. Yeah. Do you guys think that they do need a leader? Or oh, do you yes. think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because Miller wasn't going to be the guy. Whoa. Miller was all like, let's go back. And then he passed out. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That was pretty quick. Nobody's following that dude anywhere. Yeah. He tried, and yeah. he tried a couple of episodes, and they were like, no, yeah. no, not you, Betty. Mm-hmm. Um, they do need a leader. I mean, who's going to tell? I mean, they're so used to someone telling them what to do. They need a strong person. But once they found out that um, Maddie had the commander, that didn't exactly break one crew, but it really made them go back to their traditional leader role. Yeah. To their roots, yeah. For sure. And so Echo kind of steps up. She says, mm-hmm. I'll be the leader, and her first kind of step to do that is to go find Maddie, which, speaking of Maddie, there were some tensions flying between her and Clark in this episode, for sure. They are still definitely on completely different pages. Clark saying, we made our choice, we're with McCreary now. Maddie said, you made your choice, you're with McCreary. She's a strong little cookie, that one. She's got a lot of knowledge in her brain kicking around, and to put it quite honestly, that was true. I mean, she had made a decision. Clark usurped her decision and said, no, you're coming with me over and over and again. Kidnapped her, put a, a lock yeah, thing the, around the shock her neck. Collar. The shock collar. And the shock. shocked her with she, it. And sh- yes. yeah, she She's put, not playing around. Uh, bad I mean, <laughs> mommy. Bad, bad mommy. I don't know. I mean, some kids might need that these days. <laughs> <laughs> Social have you walked the so streets fast. of Hollywood? I'm just so saying. Fast. They're animals. I thought it was funny how sort of like at its core how teenagery it was though because she sneaks out through mm-hmm. a window. She goes to steal the car. I was like, this really could take place in like 2018. <laughs> like just the fundamental thing she does. Kids I thought don't it was change. funny. Kids don't change <laughs> even in the future. Um, and she also changes the passphrase in the flame, which mm-hmm. Wait, how did she do didn't that? know you could reset. Yeah. Yeah, but she had control over. I mean, I think they all could. Um, mm. I just don't think they ever really articulated it. Um, what they could, can or cannot do with the flame. But mm. um, it's a good thing she did because Clark would have totally Clark and Abby would have totally taken it out. Mm. Trying to tell her what to do. It's like, no, you can't tell me what to do. I might be in a child's body, but my brain is a grown ass woman. She's mm. essentially changing the lock on her iPhone. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> Password protected, Mom. Password protected. Password protected. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So Maddie does eventually, of course, get away from Clark for a while. And Echo and Raven find her. I guess guess that was after Clark did find her. But Raven and Echo do find her. And they want her to lead one crew, you know, lead one crew. And they go to take the collar off, and Clark comes in, guns a blazing. Uh, What'd you guys think of that entrance? Uh, I was just like, Clark, come on, man, get over it. <laughs> Clark is working my last nerve. Seriously. And I wanted to slap some sense into her. It's and like, that little trick she pulled. With the girl. mic, keeping the mic open on the on the that walkie was, talkie. That was snaky. Slap, yeah. That was yeah. pretty snaky. Um but yeah, that was a that was intense. She she's like full mama bear mode. And Abby's <laughs> encouraging it with which I'm like, girl, you don't know the half of it. But when you think about it, Abby has taught her to be that kind of mom. Yeah. Abby put her above her husband, which is why her husband got spaced. Everybody got set down to the planet because she didn't want her daughter to die. That's right. And she's basically told Clark, always put your child above everyone else's child. Mm-hmm. Your child is more important than everybody else's child. You, you, you. And so that's what she's learned, and that's how she's doing it, because I hate to be that person, but if it's a choice between saving a thousand people and saving one person, uh... Uh, To be fair, though, if you're in Clark's shoes, like, she's the only person who was with you for five years. But we're not not even just talking about a thousand people. We're talking about 
the last thousand, thousand people, people. Right. the entire human race. Yeah. So you're putting one child against the entire human race. And you're putting the person in charge who you know from the get-go, McCreary is not a good guy. Oh, God, no. Whatever issues I might have with Dioza, she is an sociopath. Right. She is willing to, like, work with everybody else. McCreary is not. He's and a rabid like, dog. Yeah, he's a rabid dog. And she's like, oh, we'll take care of that in the future later. That's like saying I'm going to have sex with you tonight and we'll worry about pregnancy later. Oh, it no, don't work no, like that. No, no, it no, don't no. work like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, eventually, since her mic is on, McCreary and his men come charging in, and they want to kill Echo, but they decide, yeah, we'll just knock her out, we'll interrogate her. But they get Shaw and they get Raven. So I have to question that decision to bring Shaw and Raven back onto that base. Why did you leave? Why bring both of them? Why bring both of them? Why didn't you, Why didn't you bring Murphy and uh, and Amara? I understand Maury. bringing bringing um, Raven because she needed to in oh. case they had the um, but Amori could have done that Amori did that with oh, John oh yeah she did then they shouldn't have brought well, either one of them a... or at least just brought seriously one. Echo what's the matter with you I expect better leadership from really? you lady I expect better that's a, a decent point <laughs> yeah that is a decent point she's trying her best okay she has a lot <laughs> on her mind she's a little frazzled um, but they have Echo the McCreary and his men have Echo um, and Clark is basically saying, listen, you got to help me out here or else these guys behind me, the second I stand up, you're a goner. And um, they kind of have a little talk about Bellamy. Clark thinks that Bellamy and Echo were good for each other. And Echo's like, you're an idiot. He's not dead, I don't think. Um, <laughs> but, it's like I'm a just, couple of I girls mean, in the locker room. Here, but... This is stupid. Oh, my God. Bellamy's still alive. What's the matter with you? <laughs> exactly <laughs> He's my boyfriend. He's mm-hmm. never going back to you. He's <laughs> my, my boyfriend. My boyfriend. I thought it was kind of sweet, though, because they both clearly care about him very much. So it was yeah. a nice conversation a way to bond despite some of their past differences. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's face down in the muck. <laughs> yeah. Under fire. Well, okay, and Clark, but Clark is also still mad at Bellamy a little bit because he put the flame in Maddie, so we got to remember that. That she took willingly because he was trying to save the human race. I mean, true, but, I mean, it's a trust thing, you know? <sighs> she trusted him. <laughs> Well, eventually, though, Clark does kind of realize that after Maddie starts spouting off all of this knowledge she has in her brain, which I, of course, really like that we connect it back to Lexa and all of that. We had a lot of really emotional stuff um, kind of involving Lexa, which I thought was pretty cool because she was a character that I really enjoyed and I miss a lot. So I like it when we get mentions of her. Um, What did you guys think about the conversation between Maddie and Clark um, about the commander things? Well, I thought it was, uh, what did Maddie tell her? That she kept on showing her that moment when she was ready for war. And um, it was... It, it it wasn't so that uh, she she would make her feel guilty, is because she didn't want her to feel the same way that she did. Yes. Right. Oh, I thought it was really good was the um, learning from the previous commanders, mm-hmm. and her articulating it, which I thought was interesting yeah. because they wrote it the way a child who had only talked to one person all of her life, mm-hmm. trying to articulate all these ideas and thoughts in her head from all these adult people who've lived a totally different life to her mother, making her mother understand that it's not coming from her, but it's coming from um, the knowledge pool that she has. And I think Clark, for a while, is going to have a difficult time sort of Understanding just how mature her kid, her, I mean, her kid grew up. Overnight. Overnight. Well, we're talking about 100 years worth of commanders. Right. I think that's a good point, though. I think that they do a good job writing mm-hmm. her voice, so it is believable. It's not just a sort of robotic thing. Like she yeah. has her own emotions and kind of is trying to express it. So I like that you brought that up. Um, I also love the fact that they included the line, "Life should be more about just surviving." Right, that's yeah. a classic, and I think that's what really hit Clark in the heart and kind of, you know, changed her mind. And she does change her mind. When the men are about to kill Echo, Clark turns on him last minute and kind of saves them all, which was pop, which pop. pretty cool. Yeah. Pop, pop. She saved them because uh, Maddie was looking at her like, if you let her die, I will never forgive you. Like, mm. the look she was sending her the entire time was like, this is 
no, you can't kill another one of my people after she shot the one person in the mm-hmm. the bus or car or whatever it is when they were leaving when she'd convinced yeah. him that. Because um, they are her people and Clark has to respect that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so Clark decides that she's going to stop the transport ship. Maddie's not too keen on that. She doesn't really want her mom to leave her, which was really <laughs> sweet. Um, but it was cute how Clark mm-hmm. reassured her and said, listen, you know, how I felt about Lexa, I loved her so much, but it's nothing compared to how I feel about you, and I'm the commander of death, and I say we will meet again. I was like, that's the voice that I know. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. the Clark that I know, which I really liked. And Clark also tells Echo to go save Bellamy. I think that there was a lot of good character stuff in these last two episodes. There was a lot yes. of good moments between the actors, yeah. too, right? Like, those lingering moments. and You know, I love that. Those quiet moments yes. where there is no dialogue, but you can see that there's some there's a communication going on between I the agree. two actors. It was really good. I definitely yeah. agree. I've really enjoyed the writing from this season in general. You could really tell that they planned it all out. And since they got an early pickup for next season, mm-hmm. it gave them such freedom of not having to rush anything and being able to take their time and being yeah. able to figure out what they want to do for the entire course of this season, as well as how they're going to build on to next season. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely agree with that. And so the last people I kind of want to talk about for this episode is sort of the Abby, Kane, Dioza stuff. And so, Vincent. Oh, and Vincent. Vincent. Sorry, I can't leave him out. So Dioza and Kane are Team McCreary, reluctantly, sort of. Mm-hmm. And Dioza is really, really trying to convince McCreary to kind of just have peace, like let's let's all live in harmony, and McCreary's really He's not, not having, having it. it at He's all. Not having I it. mean, he has her notebook with all of her plans. Like that's right. a pretty much like that's all he really needs yeah. from her and her child, of course. And he basically makes that clear. He says, after this child is born, you're gone, pretty much. Yeah. It's like, whew. Which was, I mean, um, which I was still surprised by that he even wanted to save the kid. I'm like, I know, I, I feel like it's a little out of character for him to yeah. care so much, but I don't know, maybe not. They haven't really said what McCreary was in jail for. Mm-hmm. I can't figure out if he was rebelling. I don't think he was rebelling with Dioza. No, he might have been rebelling in general about something else. But they, they did consummate like they're having a baby together, so they. Must have been on the same team for a second. Well, yeah, you're going to oh, be on a bored. ship for a little or while. Bored, or bored, I guess that's true. You know, He's an be... attractive man. Yeah, you know. And I mean, I find him attractive. A lapse of judgment. Well, what else are you going like, to do? You know, bad boys are kind of fun, but hey. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you're on a ship, you're bored, there's nothing else to do, downtime. You know, you look around and think, not that I'm that way. Some people are like that. <laughs> I'm a good person. I'm not. Never well, mind, I mean, anyway. All right, let's 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 paint the picture here. Okay, so you're two <laughs> criminals. Candles. All right, you're 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 on a ship in space. You're both attractive, <laughs> right? The dark. What nights. else are you gonna do? Are you gonna YouTube some shows? What are you gonna do? I think we will. Now that you have that voice on right now, let's just go right into that. Should we just go on to yeah, YouTube and sure. shows? We're already in the zone. Right. We're already in the mood. In a world, here we are. <laughs> Oh, I have my score music, too. Oh, my God. This was a pretty epic episode of The Hundred Folks, so I'm going to give you an epic read. Are you ready? Yes. Hey, After Buzzers. Our network producers after shows for nearly all your favorite TV shows. From dramas, reality TV, sci-fi, and more. There is no network that works harder to serve television fans. But we need your help. Your help. We're asking that you please subscribe to one or more of our YouTube channels. One or more. By subscribing to our channel, YouTube will suggest content that's tailor-made for you. And you'll help AfterBuzz continue to grow. Grow. And if you're worried about pesky notifications, don't be. Don't be. Because they're (laughs) optional. Optional. So hit that subscribe button now for this channel and check out our other AfterBuzz YouTube channels as well. Subscribe, subscribe. Let us know you did so in the comments. And we'll thank you on air. Thank you. And for now, thanks for being the best fans and for helping us be the ESPN of TV Talk. ESPN of TV Talk. Love you. That was incredible. Thank you so much for that. My...
pleasure. If you sat here and didn't talk about this episode at all and just read that, it would have been worth it for you to be worth up here. It. Oh my gosh, I bow down to you. Thank you so and much. And put on the glasses. You gotta, you gotta make the live move. reads fun, man. You do. <laughs> you you certainly do. And it's true. And we really do. Yeah. It really does help us when you subscribe and you get, yeah. you know, because we're ending now. But that doesn't mean you have to stop seeing us no. every week because we're on a bunch of other shows that we'll tell you about at the end. But we still have so much more to get through. So let's keep on oh, yeah. plugging two. along, chugging along. Please. I don't remember what word it is, but it's <laughs> one of those two. So Kane really, really wants to see Abby. But McCreary says, no, you're not seeing her until she cures all of our people and examines my child. Honestly, fair. I, I was like, that makes fair sense. Enough. Fair-ish enough. Mm-hmm. She's got to get her work done before she can, you know, yeah. socialize. Yeah. In the meantime, here, listen to all the people that are dying yes. because of you yes. now. Oh. The choices you oh, made. made. That was nice rough. Nice going, bud. That was rough. Benedict Kane. Eventually, <laughs> stop, guys. I, I need to be on Team Kane here because you guys aren't. But Kane eventually does get Team to see Benedict. Abby and says there's no way McCreary is accepting the surrender. Yeah. He's tired of trying to choose the least bad option. He doesn't think they're ever going to get humanity back. Mm-hmm. It's bleak. It's looking bleak for him. He's being very pessimistic. Abby's kind of trying to console him a bit and eventually dumps out the pills. Yeah. Which I was like, good for you. Yeah. That's the fi- I hope that's like the final nail in the coffin. Like, she's done. You know? You have to, she, it had to be when she was ready. Yeah. Right. And I agree. when she was willing to do it and when she was ready to like. I think start. having her daughter back was a big part yeah. of it yeah. as well. I don't think she wouldn't have been able to do it without Clark returning to yeah. her. With her grandchild. I think that inspired her a lot. I think the people in her life coming back into her life has been a really good thing for her. And I agree. I think that definitely helped. So Vincent, Cherry's fave, comes in as well and tells Kane that Abby went to examine Dioza. Which, I, who knows if that's actually true or not, right. but that's what he says. He kind of taunts slash compliments Kane on killing hundreds of people. <laughs> classic Vincent, mm. honestly. Keep Vincent said he's unburdened by a conscience, tells him to embrace the demon like Abby has. He is really laying it on thick with Kane. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, did you love that moment? I was looking at I was like, is he going to be friends with Kane? No. Is going to be a love triangle? What's going on? <laughs> and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, he's not swinging both ways. Mm. He's chomping. He wants to chomp. Yeah. And he does indeed start to chomp. But Abby comes in last minute, has that handy dandy little remote and shocks the crap out of his neck. Yes. Not before he, he shivved him a couple of times with that scalpel. <laughs> That's and very true. Took a nice bite out of his neck. Yeah. He sure did. And Kane um, not looking too hot. No. But, um, and Kane ends up forgiving Abby. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's what is her. that all about? Because Kane and Abby forever, guys. But he <laughs> says, I know you told Octavia to break me, but it was her that killed those people. It was like, but it was also kind of Abby. It was also kind of Abby, dude. <laughs> It's fine. She was Love been blinds old. you. Yeah. Love blinds you. Because, yeah. you know, everyone blaming just one person. Now, y'all were all in that kitchen. Y'all were all in the lunchroom area. Y'all were all eating. So, hey. Mm-hmm. That meat hey. gelatin. Ugh. So just sense. thinking about that makes me uh. sick. So sick. <laughs> um, we get a little teeny snippet of Shaw and Raven. So Shaw tells Raven, you have to kill me or else I think I'm going to crack when they torture me. And Shaw doesn't want to kill one crew, right. which he's a good guy. Well, it's, it, he wasn't worried about cracking when they torture him. He was worried about cracking, cracking when, when they, they torture, torture Raven. Yes. Which yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I wouldn't want to see Raven tortured. Well, yeah, neither. We've sweet. already seen Raven <laughs> tortured, seen so, Raven tortured much, so much, but already. every time it hurts me. Yeah. And we talked um, already a lot about how Octavia decided to go be the target from the bullets and such. Um... And but the second she kneels to die, Echo comes bursting in with <laughs> with all of her crew, and yeah. um, she's Maddie's fine. Maddie's at the wheel, like, what's up? <laughs> did, did you think she was gonna die? Mm, for a brief I moment. For a minute, yeah. For they, a brief it moment, felt yeah. like they were leaning up to uh. her sacrificing herself, and that being the arc of redemption. And I was like, how dare you? But uh. this is kind of cool. 
Octavia's badass. Uh, that honestly yeah, would have been a cool if, death, though. If she was going to go out, that would have been the way been to go That would have been the way out. to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, was, I was a little worried for her for a second. Uh, but like I said, it, was, it would have been epic. But she's fine. And um, they save all of them. And we're charging. And so that brings us in to our finale. <laughs> so one crew, starting out last episode, they're in decent shape. Not the case starting out this episode. Um, everyone's either injured or dead or hungry or has no medical equipment. And it's just a bad situation all around. Mm. But they really can't do anything. They can't surrender because everyone who is surrendering is dying. And, um, yeah, they think that maybe Maddie will save them. And then we get to the moment where Bellamy and Echo are protecting Maddie from Octavia, and Maddie says to let her pass. What did you guys think was going to happen at that moment? I kind of thought that's a good, what happened was going to happen. You did call I, it? I, I, yeah, I was like, she's going to bend the knee. Yeah. She's going to bend the knee. She has no, no other option. Yeah. Cherry, what did you think? I was very happy. I wasn't sure what was going to go on. I knew she wasn't going to kill her. Mm-hmm. Or anything like that. And I know that she was going to put one crew above all. I didn't realize she was going to, like, dramatically throw the knife into the ground and bend one knee. But then when I thought about it, that's the only way to bring both sides. Because both sides, Octavia's people and Maddie's mm-hmm. people were all pointing guns at each other. And you, they can't do that. They, they can't yeah. have an inner war. I think it's very hard to be co-rulers, too, at this point. I thought that maybe Octavia would, you know, shake her hand, be like, mm. let's work together. The fact that she actually bent down, like, bowed to her, mm. I think was a huge, huge step for her, a huge step for her character. And I think that it's what's best for right now. I don't think that they can necessarily be following two people at once. I think they no. kind of need one symbol, one, uh. you know, uniting person. Yes. So I thought that was a very... <laughs> Big move of Octavia. It also felt like Octavia was offering her her sword. Yeah. You know, like... Passing it on. You know, well, more like like she would be her paladin or yeah. her... or her number uh, Her number... Her, her... What do you call it? Her samurai, mm-hmm. if you will. I'll be your soldier. I'll be your general. I'll be your knight. Whatever you need me to yeah. do. You have my sword. You know, it's like... It's like a call back to Camelot in a way, too. That's a really good point. Yeah. I thought th- I, I really did get goosebumps when she mm. did that, though. I got chills, and then everyone else started kneeling. I thought that was such a cool moment. I loved it so much. Yeah. And also, I think Octavia wants to let go of the responsibility. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Once all that's over, she's done so much. I think she's really broken on the inside, and she needs time to get away. She needs time to heal. She, she needs, needs a, a vacation. <laughs> There's she, nowhere to vacation right now. She's about to get 125 years sleep, true. She but that's enough. That's true. She can a bit. Um, but Maddie goes and visits Gaia, who's injured really badly, but not as badly as we thought, because they think that if they can get her to Abby, she'll still be able to keep her leg. Which I was like, oh, she's on the verge of death, and like she's gonna be fine. So I'm glad though, because I was I was sad for her. I was scared for her for a second. Honestly, I thought she might be a goner, but I'm glad she's not. No, but she hung on for Maddie. She did. Yes. That was a, that was a smart move, backtracking a little bit. Bellamy w- w- was uh, just coaching her in that direction. Like, are you, all right, you got to live for the for your Hedda right. at least. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. that, and that's what matters the most to Gaia and what mm-hmm. always has. Which sort of speaking of that, um, Maddie really, really wants to find another way. She does not want to mm-hmm. go into this fight. She doesn't yeah. think that it's going to be good for her people. She's not sure that they can win it. Gaia tells her to ask the commanders and just close her eyes. And Bellamy's like, we really do not have time for this. But Andra's the one that says, give her a second. And I think that that meant so much to Gaia. You could see it in her face. I loved that moment of Indra kind of finally like embracing what Gaia has been you know, living for her whole life. What did you guys think of that moment? Bellamy needs to shut the hell up and stop telling everybody what to do. So, okay, you we're going to die charge Bellamy. Bellamy. Let's talk about Gaia. You are not in charge. I was really happy, though, because when it comes right down to it, uh, Gaia has always felt that she was second behind Octavia, behind everybody, because she didn't live up to her mother's expectations as a warrior. And that was when the mother finally really not only um, respected, but she showed her the respect. He showed her the respect in front of everyone else to let her know that she respected her religious belief and respected her knowledge. So I was so, so happy about that. Yeah, I loved that moment. That was one of my favorites of the whole really, episode. Yeah. 
That's yeah, very cool. I, 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 this this entire season, I I, I love the Indra Gaia story as they've gotten closer and closer and closer as well, because, like last season, they were just completely estranged. Yes. Right? It's been uh, it's been it's been nice. And I think yeah. that a lot of times it's sort of Gaia, like going to Endra's level to connect, mm-hmm. and it was finally Endra reaching her hand out, and you know giving Gaia and her beliefs the credit. I just I thought that was a really really cool really moment, good. and it was another one of those without the dialogue. It was just that look from Gaia, which was super super cool. She's a great actress. So that was sweet, and then we cut to something very not sweet. We have McCreary you know, has Raven and Shaw oh, and boy. he's torturing Shaw by pulling his teeth out. Ugh, that was that was painful. So oh I cringe so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the guy that Kane chose over Octavia. Thank I you. I just wanna say Thank you. Th- that's the guy that Benedict Kane chose over Octavia. <laughs> but we can't forget what Octavia did this season. But she did she, what was to, to she keep did what was necessary survive. to keep a, people alive. Not out of alive. pleasure, yeah. not out of joy or spite. Mm-hmm. And that was some marathon man craziness, teeth pulling. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, if that wasn't bad enough, they realize that's not working, and so they get a giant claw and are gonna start pulling limbs because you don't need your legs to fly. Uh, Yikes! Yeah. And finally. Raven breaks down and says she'll fly the ship. So it was originally Shaw worried that he wouldn't be able that he was gonna crack, and of course they turned the tables and had Raven do it. Which yeah. How did Raven Classic. learn how to fly that ship? I guess she knew how to fly the other one. Raven but can that's fly a anything. Much bigger ship. Raven can hack With anything. Things well, didn't yeah, didn't it. no, didn't 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 Raven fly the the ship the from the ark? The little shuttle thing, right? To but this one was like bigger. I thought. I think they're well, just yeah. assuming because she's a pilot, she can fly pretty much anything. Yeah. I don't think that's how. She's a genius. She can literally do anything. Sure it is. It's I would put television. all of my trust in Raven <laughs> to do whatever. So Raven. going back a little bit to Clark's storyline again, because mm-hmm. we kind of intercut between a lot of them this, which I think added to a lot of the you know tension and excitement. Mm-hmm. So Clark goes to see Dioza, gets past the guards so easily. She's like, I have hormones for the baby. Abby told me to bring them. <laughs> and the guard's like, okay, uh, cool. Sure. And she knocks her out immediately. I'm like, this is the worst guard I've ever seen in my life. I thought that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> and then the, Dioza and Clark have a pretty funny exchange when Dioza says, it's pretty hard to keep track of whose side you're on. And Clark's like, ditto, girl. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, that's true. You guys do flip sides they quite a bit. They flip sides very often in pursuit of their own naked power grabs. Yeah. I think There's, everything should go the way I think it should go. And I was like, uh, okay. Why don't They're you all talk? They're trying their best. Why don't you all just try to talk? Talk that would it be out. Too easy you know? and not bloody it's enough. There'd be no we action should all sequences. Be talking. Just we communicate. Women. Well, to be fair, her. Clark and Diosa do communicate with each other yeah. somewhat. <laughs> I mean, it involves Clark having a gun to her stomach. Yeah, to, yeah, stomach. to the to the unborn uh. child. Um, but and she was not kidding. She was no, not she kidding. Was not. I will shoot your baby. Mm-hmm. They barge I will in shoot there. Your baby. And I loved... That was actually a cool line. I like that. I she will was shoot like, your baby. No, she was more along <laughs> like, No, yeah? if I shoot your pregnant if I shoot a pregnant woman, that means your child still might live. And then she lowers the end. That was like a good that was a nice moment. That was a crazy moment. She had some good lines. She also just like looked him straight in the eye and was like, I won't let my child die, will you? Mm-hmm. She's like, ooh, Clark. All right. I'll get it for the zingers today. Um, so, yeah, one crew is trying so hard not to have them take off because then, you know, RIP them. Right. Um, and so, going back to the Amori Murphy sort of storyline, because that's kind of where we go next. We are kind of going in a little mm-hmm. circle, seeing where everyone's at, checking up on them. Um, McCreary's men are hardcore shooting at their car and it looks like they're gonna get away for a second but they shoot the engine and they stop but not to fear um because someone gets out with bow and arrow which i think is always awesome yeah it's always awesome and i think that that's like such a prominent thing in entertainment now it's just like girls with bows and arrows but i'm here for it like we have katniss if you watch riverdale we have like cheryl has knows how to shoot a bow and arrow too i love that i love that though bow and arrow for the win it's always a win 
Um, we have a bow and arrow, but we also have like Allegis Crews crazy, you know. Their sound cannons. Their sound cannons. Their sonic their cannons. Crazy stuff. Which are not weapons. Those are used for mining. Right. Yeah, but they were using them as weapons, which is pretty bri- which is brilliant. Jerks. But that was Maddie's plan. Use their own weapons against, against them. Against them. Ha yeah. ha. And they certainly do, because mm-hmm. just one little, you one know, arrow spark right up at the them, sh- yeah. psh, blows psh. all the way up. Maddie is ready to go absolutely ham and shoot all of them, but Bellamy convinces her not to, saying, listen, this is not what the flame is telling you. You know this. It's your choice, mm-hmm. but I would not do that. Um mm. I no. you didn't you didn't like that? Stop yeah, listening to Bellamy. Uh, yes and no. I don't. I mean, those fools blew up the world <laughs> again. Yes, to be again. fair, though, like we again. have so few people left, we should probably preserve save as many some as we of can. Them. I guess four hundred and twelve at that point, right? Yeah, but I really think that a lot of the new Sky people are not going to be grateful. They're not going to be nice. Mm. They just aren't. I mean, because they have they they haven't been awake long enough to let go of the anger that got them in jail for the first place. And then they got put to sleep. So they still will wake up angry and pissed like it was yesterday because to them it's going to be but yesterday. But I think that they're going to be grateful that they'd save them. I think Have so. you never known unpleasant, nasty people? Because I've known quite a few, and they are not. They're like scorpions. You should have known I was going to sting you when yeah, they let they, me on your they back. they saved them. I think they'll be a little thankful. I really don't think. Maybe a few of them, but the bulk of them I don't think will be grateful. I don't, know. No, no, no. I don't know. I, I mean, do you I, think McCreary will be grateful? McCreary oh dead. no, McCreary's dead. I, I, McCreary long gone. Yeah, he's gone. He's not seeing his his kid. <laughs> but would he have been grateful? Would he? Have oh, been absolutely nice? not, because he's a he's a a rabid dog. You know what would have been a cool shot? I would have liked to have seen him be the last one on the planet as a. <laughs> the oh, bomb went off. That would have been like, something. That's what I was looking for. I was like, where is he? Is he tied to a tree somewhere? <laughs> Ooh, they didn't no. have time for that. They didn't, yeah. They, they had, had like they 14 had time minutes. To get, they, had four, they got 412 people onto a transport ship in 10 minutes. because but, They're all running. <laughs> they're all running in an orderly Listen, fashion. Time I'm just saying, I've been concept. on lines in, in, at amusement parks, and they were not that orderly. <laughs> 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 That's a decent point. But yeah, that was a terrible move from McCreary. He puts in the lawn codes. They do everything to, you know, try to get him to stop. And he said, I can't have this valley. Nobody can. It just punches him right in. I'm like, boy, really? And once yeah. again, Clark wouldn't listen to anybody because what deal is to say? Shoot him. Shoot him. And she, Clark was like, no, nah, I'm not going to shoot mm. him. I'll reason with him. I'll tell him not to do that. Well, listen, even, you know, that she did that, it turned out pretty fine. Which we'll get to at the end. Kind-ish. It's kind of fine. No, no kind one, no one major of. died that we know of. That we know of. It's a lot of people are really wounded pretty bad. We've got a couple well, wounded, but Benedict the, Ar- the Arnold died. Well, no, he was put in cryo. So I we'll know, see but I'm happened. hoping he'll die in cryo. All right, well, let, <laughs> let's rewind just a little bit oh, before we talk about not having anything to do dude, worms the dead. worms. I really can't believe they didn't come back, which we can talk about during predictions and whatnot. All but, the worms? Yes, the worms. I oh, think yeah. the worms are still like they no, didn't. The worms have anything. inherited the earth now. That's 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 where that has gone. The oh earth, worms are like yeah. Give me a spinoff. <laughs> of They'll the be worms. like giant worms <laughs> eating, and killing They're everything. On scorched earth. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, steering us right back on track. I thought it was so funny that Diosa said, "Life as you know it is about to end." Again, because I think that's the whole theme of the show, mm-hmm. is every single season, life as they know it ends. Again, I, because there's a completely new situation to face. And a new bad guy. Or bad woman. Mm-hmm. True. Equality. That's very true. E- equality. Um, okay, so our original bad guy, Murphy, had a pretty great arc mm. in this episode. Oh my god. Because he's no longer really the bad guy. Like, people, I mean, he's a cockroach mm-hmm. still. But um, people are starting to take to him. Amori <laughs> and Monty are not going to leave without him, which you know that I've been rooting for Amori and Murphy for a while. So I really, really loved that. And Monty was just a boss in this episode. Oh, he was. Oh, he was so selfless. He was killing it. Monty's been a boss all season. That's true, but he's like a quieter boss. You know yeah. what I mean? And he got time to shine, and I really, really appreciated that because he deserved like a really, really great heroic. Yeah. You know, arc. that was yeah, like lifting, putting him over his shoulder like yes. that. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, I was like, that's a guy that runs some Spartan races. Yeah, yeah. Monty's a good guy. He's always been a good guy. Good he really, people. he has. I just, yeah. I, I love that they gave him the spotlight. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. he yeah. has been in sort of the background for a while. So I think it's really cool. And it was, it was a good send off for him. It was. It was. I'm doing like this. I miss yeah. him. Already? already? <laughs> I, 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 I too. always liked him. Uh, I always felt that they yeah. should have done more with his character. I always felt like they were putting him in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he's gone. But he had a really good, that was a really good story. Was like, a, yeah. I was like, wait, what? Did he get to sleep? What? 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 Yeah. Um, and John Murphy, always let John Murphy be John Murphy. If John Murphy had been the control, you know he would have shot McCreary. He wouldn't even waited for it to say anything. He'd be like, no. whatever, bam. Bam. He's so funny. He's so di- he, I feel like he's like so different from the other characters in certain ways. Like he's just so blunt about like who he is, and I really he's respect a survivor. That. Oh. When mess is going down, I always hang out with John Murphy. Well, Joe. at the end of part one, we, at, at, we just rewind a little bit. But at the end of part one, when they're all in the jeep and they're all, after they just shave the Bellamy and Indra and, uh-huh. and Octavia and everybody, and, and, and everybody was all quiet. He was just like. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he cried. He said up. everything that everybody else was feeling. <laughs> Guys, he moment. just wants a gun. Okay, uh, that's all he really wants. Um, we have two comments in the chat that I have to mm-hmm. give a shout Please. out to. Derek Hogan, Monty carrying Murphy to the ship. Was Monty paying Murphy back for the season four finale when Murphy carried Monty to the ship after Monty passed out? When his hands got burned from radiation exposure. Oh, yes. Good very, call back. very good. Call back. Very good. And then Arduro Guzman, who A, loves your voice and was like, big ups Thank for you. your read, uh, said McCreary parallels to Luna back in season four when she wanted to win the conclave so that nobody could have the bunker. Oh, oh. yes. Oh. You guys are so good with your you guys observations. Are just on it. Oh, Luna. I have so much to say about that character. We definitely don't have time for that. Luna. Oh, Luna. She was fun to watch, so I won't lie. She was an interesting villain. Because she didn't start off that way. They have... One of the things I really love about the 100 is the treatment of women. It's very equality. Some are good, some are bad. Some Mm -hmm. are strong leaders, some are more passive. They're not traditional female characters. So every week I'm like... Ooh, you girl, girl. I mean, I love the fact that I can hate women not because they're trying to steal someone's man, but because they're evil, diabolical, evil villains. Not even a winch, not a cow, just a straight up villain or someone who's just bad and not like in a traditional check way. So, yeah. yes, 100. Yeah. We have <laughs> heroes, we have villains, we have anti-heroes. We have the whole the whole gambit and everyone's so gray. I, I definitely agree with that. It's, it's a very fun to watch. Um... So we also have some stuff going on between Maddie, Bellamy, Clark. Bellamy and Clark are still a little bit at odds, but Maddie's going to do everything in her power to repair that. She tells Bellamy about how Clark used to radio him every day, which was so sweet. And I'm glad that she finally brought that up because Clark does obviously care about him so much. And I think that... It's it's definitely easy to lose sight of that if you're Bellamy, considering some of the choices that Clark has made um, regarding him up until this point. But I thought that was sweet that Maddie was sort of the glue or the magnet that kind of, you know, got them a little bit back on the same page. Maddie's trying to break up his relationship. Girl, you need to stop it. Well, she, she needs a dad. <laughs> no, that's not going to be your daddy. Huh? Well, I think she just knows how much Clark cares about him, you know, because yeah. she talked about him all the time when they were on the. She talked but he about has all a new of girlfriend. them. On the, yeah. yeah, well, who knows if that I don't, I, mean, I don't know if it, I, I. I honestly don't know. I, I don't think it's a romance thing as no. much as it's like it's just really? one of those. Fre- Even after the last, no, I never thought I think that it's, I never, they'd be a good uh, couple. I, I never thought to be. No. What? I think it's a friendship thing. I think it's like one of those, like that friend that you have that you know, calls you on all your S, you know, that that drops truth bombs left and right. That one friend that you could call at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and be like, I'm really drunk and I need to talk, <laughs> you know, or or somebody, that, you know, I need bail money. <laughs> I it's think, that yeah. friend that you had that one moment where you thought about sleeping together and then you are both like, Nah. Interesting, because I would be I've, better off friends. Yeah. yeah, I've always kind of thought they would be in game. To be honest with you, like a little piece of me since season one. I don't know. I just feel like they kind of write them in that way. But it's interesting. I like that we have different perspectives. Mm. 
Hmm. I wonder what Sarai would say if she was here. (laughs) (laughs) We won't know until season six. We'll ask her then. Um, Let's change gears a little bit, though, and talk about Octavia and Abby, because they had a really juicy scene in this, too. Octavia corners Abby in the room where she's trying to save Kane. Um immediately says you left without saying goodbye which i thought was so funny like she's still a little salty which i think is great i loved it because for a minute i thought octavia was like i could kill both of them and no one will find okay. out yeah. huh. i'll look for them i but didn't I find them i don't know i don't know what so happened <laughs> must have killed them before yeah. we got here Oh, wow. oh, darn. <laughs> well, Octavia is trying to convince Abby to get on the dang ship. And leave Kane behind. And Abby's not about to. And I really like that Octavia reference. This is not a choice, you know, it reminds her of, you know, when they were in the bunker having to eat other human beings, which... I, I, I like that we got those two together because we don't see them very much. And then mm-hmm. we saw them a lot in the bunker during the flashback. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that we got some. No, it was a very earned scene, For right? Sure. Yeah, that, that moment was really earned because I, I felt like a lot of the season had led up to that. These two yes. needed to have some sort of recon, reconciliation. Yeah, right? I agree. And I re- think that was yeah. necessary to have those two together. A reminder yeah. that it wasn't just Octavia, that she was doing it too, and that she'd mm. been trying to duck that responsibility for a long time and acting like, oh, uh, um, which is probably why she doesn't like Mer- I mean, I don't think she likes Marcus for a variety of reasons because Marcus a douche. Yeah, but but, it, but then Octavia decided at the end to save him after to all. To save him, yeah. Well, yeah. I think it was easier to, to save him than, because I really think looking at it, looking that she thought for a minute, you're small enough, I could knock you out and carry you. And then she thought, eh, I don't feel like fighting with you over this entire time. You'll just tell Clark, that plus the Clark bitch at me. I'll just bring him anyway. It's like they're finally learning. <laughs> well, and Abby, well, Abby was not going to go willingly either. We have to remember she, you know, strike me down or get out because I'm saving the man that I love. Which... Strike her down. No. <laughs> I love the, I love Kane and Abby. I was really excited to see them. And we've had a lot of, like... I love yous between them, even not, you know, necessarily saying I love you, but they've really cared cared about each other this season, which has been fun to see because I liked them back in like season one. So yeah. just saying it's very, very exciting and fulfilling. So they take Kane and Gaia and all the others on stretchers to the ship. There is one minute until impact because we never do things with the time cushion in this show. We're always down to the wire. Um, Bellamy tells Clark... You do what you gotta do. You, you know, shut the um, door to the ship if you have to, but I'm not leaving without my friends. He's bold, man. He's courageous. Yeah, he's, I mean, and the countdown is going. It's like 45 seconds, 30 seconds, 25 seconds, and then finally. <laughs> and poor Raven has all oh. this stress on her. She's like, give me, please leave. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting the way Bellamy did it, and he kept saying his family, and it was a reminder that Clark was not the family that was on the ship with him. Yeah. That he has this new relationship, this new... Space crew. Family crew that she's kind of a part... part. She's a kind of a part of, but she's a part from them. But it's also, I think, does involve Clark because he says, I'm not doing this again. And you have to remember, he left without Clark at one point. So I think that... I, I think you're right that he definitely bonded with these other people. But I think part of it is he still feels guilty about leaving Clark. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on with him, I think. They eventually do make it into the ship. Bless, or else we'd have no characters left. And there would not be a season six. Um... Raven just says just once I want to take off from a planet that's not on fire. I'm like, I want that yeah. for you, girl. I really want that I for you. I hear you, Raven. I, you deserve she, more. Can she just, like, have some fun space walking? Like, can she just get a break? Have a boyfriend. <laughs> no. Have a nice walk on the beach. Enjoy the sunset. Well, let's see what happens on season hey, six. Just, just, want, just want some good things. But his legs going to be sore. There ain't nothing going to happen for a while. Yeah. They, they oh. tore out his teeth and crap. He's not gonna be. I'm anything. sure they fixed that before they put him in cryo. I wonder if cryo is mm-hmm. just like heals you, <laughs> or you just get out feeling like garbage still. Like you go it in with a migraine, yeah, come out with a migraine. Ugh. Yeah, like I was thinking when they were saying that, I'm like, I don't think you age as fast as you would if you were outside of it, but I think you still age just like a little bit slower, unless it's like frozen. So I couldn't figure out how. I think it's, it was. Frozen. I think it's frozen. They are frozen. Yeah. Okay. 
That is, that's gonna suck getting out and be like, oh, they'd be able to run sore. Sleep. Right. Yeah. Oh. And if they're frozen, then his leg and stuff wouldn't heal. But they're frozen. Why do I still have this hole in my neck after 125 Ow. years? You think Ow. time would heal all, but it, yet here we are. So Ooh. Jordan Love says Abby always had been shady to me. I mean, she had Clark's dad float it for goodness sake. Yes, thank yep. you for agreeing with me. Thank Agreed. you. Agreed. Okay, He's I can I can defend Abby all day long. But we still have so much to get through because this was <laughs> <laughs> next season. I'm gonna do a whole episode about why Abby's the best, but <laughs> today's not that day. Um, but yeah, like I said, everyone seems to be like okay. Murphy's gonna be fine. Guy is probably gonna keep her leg. Kane's a little so so. He's in a coma. Mm-hmm. Jackson said there's not enough of the drug to keep Kane in the coma for long. But Bellamy suggests that they just put him in cryo sleep for a while, which good idea. Um, and then Clark and Bellamy decide to make up a little bit because of Maddie, which I thought that line was sweet. Clark says, you're not mad at me for, you know, leaving you in Polis. And Bellamy says, the commander told me not to be. <laughs> right. Aw, so, so sweet. And then invites her to the, to the bridge. To the bridge, where there are 412 people left in the ship, in the human race. Right. It's, um, it's a low number. <laughs> Yeah, and about a third of them are criminals. Yep. But. And I have to say, Octavia and Dioza, even though I don't agree with Dioza, that was a good scene. Been, too. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that scene. In the, well. the room as well. <laughs> they were the leaders, too. Don't feel bad. Yeah, I wasn't but invited they either. They <laughs> haven't really proved themselves yeah. good well, leaders. Yeah, no, Octavia I don't I don't. kept her people okay, alive in the okay, bunker. Okay, okay, okay. And Dioza was going to welcome. Sky crew and her people together and try and live in peace. But I think at that moment, There's also still some you're bitterness. talking about. I, oh, I no, think at, I, I think at that moment you're also talking about the two people who started the war to be that ended the war to end all wars for real this yeah, time and point. destroy the planet. Uh, and that would be at Clark. The, and no, it no, was that those was two. that was those two. That was Dio and Octavia. When they came down from the ship, Clark felt the need to shoot them the minute she saw them, which is why when Dioza came down. Because when she first came down, I was like, what the hell's going on? And then Clark that really needed to shoot That war was going to happen either way because the Oza wanted control of that valley from well, the get-go. And she wasn't going to give, and she wasn't going to let the people from uh, fr- from uh, Polis come in without, you know, without certain restrictions. That would have been a dictatorship left and right. We all know that. It would have been a military. It would have been, it would yeah, it would have been. Type of. Yeah. Well, I I loved that scene Martial between the two law. of them. I felt like I don't know, maybe there will actually be a friendship there because I felt like those two had like something there. You know what I mean? I really really liked that scene yeah. between the two, the two of them because they understand each other. I think yeah. um, they were saying the kiss of death is liking the power, which I yes. thought was a really really interesting line. And Octavia saying, one garden, two serpents, you never stood a chance, chance yeah. which I thought was so funny. But I loved that scene. That was honestly one of my favorites of the whole episode, I think. And I really, really hope season six kind of delves into that, mm-hmm. you know, friendship, whatever. Because um, I think they're really interesting. They are both outsiders now, um, probably. They'll have to prove themselves. They yeah. have to they, prove they, themselves. They, they'll prove themselves in season six. I mean, there's going to be, we'll get into predictions later, but... There's going to be stuff that they're going to have to deal with. For sure. Because, yeah. I mean, none of this is just going to go away. Like, their no. minds are not racing. The, no. You know, no. Everyone's going to be mad. But, yeah, um, I loved how everyone was tucking their loved ones into cryo sleep mm-hmm. casually. I love, I just, very futuristic, very fun. Lullaby and good night. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they think it's going to be for about 10 years. Right. Um, and Octavia, I like how she compares it to closing the door on the floor. I thought that was a really cool parallel. I like that the hundred never forgets what they've done before, you know. Mm-hmm. It always loops back around. There's always a parallel yes. or kind of a, a cyclical type Yeah, you know, it keeps movement. going back to the arc. Yeah, which uh. is pretty great. Even the fact that they're on a ship again. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, this is like a, a parallel again, which is... It's just so fun. It's just so cool. It does. Like, everything is such a, a cycle. And happily, they won't be starving or running out of oxygen. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers. Um, but before they go to sleep, <laughs> Bellamy and Octavia have that conversation. Octavia tells Bellamy that she loves him. And I was expecting Bellamy to be like, oh, I love you too, little sis. 
Not really the case. Um, he said, a part of me is always going to love you because you're my sister, but the there's a little part of him that wishes a part of her was dead. Right. And Octavia says, that's fair. I don't know if I would have said... I no. mean, it's fair. No, I no. think it's fair. I think it's fair enough. She... He's done a lot of wrong things, too. Yeah, Agreed. but... But it's... it's. But I, he's repented for the things that he's done. I think, uh, kind of you know, the, 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 there is a sense of, like, you know, repentance for, for, or, for, for a lot of these characters. Yeah, Octavia hasn't really had the time... Exactly. ...to be repentant. Um, I just... I don't know. It kind of surprised me that Bellamy held back a little bit there because usually when it gets down to the wire and you know they're about to do something really major he does break down and it's like oh i love you too and all this but i just i thought it was kind of different for bellamy but i like that he's sticking to his guns i like how he's not forgiving her super super easily because i think it will lend to some really interesting stuff next season between the two of them you can't let her off the hook too easy yeah and she's not the sister that he grew up with i think that's the other issue that he's had this season she's not the woman that he remembered and that he thought Mm -hmm. she'd be when he came back from the ship she was she was like 180 it was it was like she's a different person it's like a doppelganger took over his her body yeah and so for him he loves his old sister this new sister is something else and he's not super cool with that hey look we all have family right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Classic I'm just brother saying, sister situation. I'm just saying, we all got, you know, some of us got siblings, and we remember them when they were young. And then well, a few angels. elections go by. And... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so we have, like, one commercial break, and then all of a sudden, Clark wakes up. I, what did you guys think was going to happen? Because I sort of thought there was, like, an enemy on the ship who had, like, stayed awake and was either waking her up to, like, fight her or, fight her, or maybe she had programmed herself to wake up earlier mm-hmm. to do something. I was not expecting what came next. What were you guys anticipating to happen when Clark moved out of her little shelf? Well, for one moment, I was, like, I was hoping aliens. BT, <laughs> <laughs> <E. T. laughs> you know? <laughs> Alien life form, maybe. <laughs> For one second, I was hoping that. Yeah. You know, but then, uh, but then, like you, I thought that maybe Clark had pre-programmed mm-hmm. it to wake herself up to do something. Um, but no, I was not expecting what had happened. Me neither, sure. No. What do you think? That was a shocker. I knew that there'd have to be some people awake just to make sure the mission, mm-hmm. the um, ship was running and everything. And I thought they'd take turns. I thought everybody was waking up, and then when that kid's face appeared, I was like, "Who's that? I don't remember yeah. that." I thought he was going to be a villain, honestly. I And I was like, maybe, did 10 years pass? I thought maybe it was like 10 minutes or something. Like, yeah. I had no mm-hmm. idea, you know, what time it could have been. So I was shocked. And I think rightfully so. I think a lot of people were probably pretty surprised. So the kid introduces himself as Jordan. And Mitch. he is Monty and Harper's son. And mm. 125 years have passed. Whoa. Derek sa- Derek Hogan says, does anyone remember that Jasper's last name was Jordan, hence Monty and Harper's son's name? Oh, yeah. I know his middle name yeah, is I Jasper, which made So me he cry. basically just Switched flipped his names. names. Oh. Jordan, okay. Jasper, Green. I'm not going to lie, guys. I did cry during this last part after the commercial. I was tearing up a bit because it was really moving, I thought, and very emotional and very, like I said, unexpected. I didn't see any of this coming. Uh, no, that was a shock. That's and the, and the little so check-ins every season. so often, yeah. the little videos, yeah, those little videos were that they painful. would leave. Right? I had no idea that we were going to be losing Monty. And Harper. And, and we and lost Harper. Harper first. Yes. Right, so Monty was left alone. Yeah, so they check back in every so often, and you see them get older and older, Mm -hmm. and they're kind of explaining that the Earth still isn't inhabitable after one year, after two years, after ten years, after I think it was like 75 years it still wasn't inhabitable. So um, they're having a lot of problems. They have their son after one or two years, you know, after the... 
Um, because they were getting busy on that like, shit. What else are you going <laughs> to do? Gonna do, gonna do, do that shit? Uh, and it's just the two of you. I'm surprised they didn't have a lot of sons. <laughs> yeah, I thought they'd have like, a couple more kids. Yeah, yeah me honestly. too. But I think they kind of realized the situation. Like, uh, they might, might have had good. another child, and we just haven't woken up to that one. Ooh, that's Maybe. a good point. It's a yes. very good point. But they put him in uh, cryo sleep for a while too because they're like, we chose this life, but he didn't. He deserves to live, you know, a fuller life and. So after Harper um, dies, very, very sad, Monty is obviously also very upset, but he's still pressing on. He's going to try to find them a new planet, try to hack the, um, the codes, files. the least yes. files that they couldn't hack beforehand to see if maybe that'll give them some answers. And so he does. He eventually cracks the codes and realizes that it was not a mining mission after all, but they were looking for another planet to use for oil, and they eventually found one. Um, and I thought it was so sort of devastating that Monty said that part of him really, really wants to put himself in the, you know, cryo sleep so he can see it, but without Harper, it's not really worth There's, it because yeah. he's too yes. lonely. I, I think there are a lot of... Um, like biblical parallels and references and it yes. felt kind of like the promised land to me in a way here mm-hmm. which i thought was really cool like a futuristic sort of promised land um but wow guys monty just give it up for monty like that was phenomenal that was such a good story arc yeah. um someone said in the chat Derek hogan i think the reason they weren't able to give monty a big arc was because nearly all of his past scenes were with jasper and because he died, Monty didn't have his buddy to act off of, which sort of made sense, but then he had, but then he had Harper. Harper. Oh. So, but then Harper wasn't on it very much. Well, I mean, between Monty and Harper, they did have some nice moments where you yes. were rooting for them. Right. right, and they were in charge of the farm and everything, yeah. so they were they were an integral part. We just didn't see them on screen that much. To be fair, we have so many characters; it's really really it's hard to people. give the all of them. Was a lot of people, and but, I think yeah. that everyone has a different time to shine. Like Octavia wasn't nearly as you know prominent in the past seasons, and this season was really like her season. I feel like so. Yeah, I don't think it's like the writers' fault necessarily, but no. I loved the way they closed him out. That was really good. Aging. Even the makeup looked good. I mean, it was just very well done. It was I agree. very well done. Yeah, it, was it was really good. Well done indeed. And I really liked the last lines he said on the video. I hope we do better there and that Jasper is wrong and that we're not the problem. Be the good guys. And may we meet again. And so we kind of pan out on this new planet. Twin suns. Go yes. in, a, in a binary system. Yep. Yeah. Yes. We have Bellamy Clark and Jordan awake looking out, and it's going to be crazy. And they also say end, end of book, book one. one. Yes. Which, I don't know if I'm missing something. I didn't quite understand that. I haven't read the books that these are based on. Right. I don't know if that yeah. has anything to do with it. It almost felt like they were referencing like the Bible, like different sections of the Bible, sort of. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, don't I, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking it's got something to do with the books, with the book series itself. Um, what it is, I don't know because I haven't read the books either. Yeah, leave and it he, in the comments yeah. what your theory is. Maybe we're completely missing something, but um, and maybe it's like a little small tidbit that doesn't really mean mm-hmm. anything. But I would like to know. I'm very curious well, now. Well, what we do know is the beginning of book two starts in the spring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's it's the important fun. part. Very Yay, true. Um, any know. final thoughts about the actual plot before we move into our special segments? and everything this season has been phenomenal in the last two episodes tied everything up but still left me personally Mm. curious and excited about the next season the writing the directing the cast has been so on on point this season yeah it's it's even one of the things i love about the 100 is every year it gets better they change the story it's not stagnant and it's just a fun show to watch yeah yeah, I just want to thank the hundred for some awesome entertainment, man. I was some edge of your seat, um, you know, constantly, you know, <laughs> having palpitations over here over who's gonna die. Um, it's been it's been a great great season, and I'm looking forward. I'm on the hook for season six. Agreed. Thank you, CW. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. We have a couple of comments sure. in the chat. Mm-hmm. Um, Arturo Guzman. The books are way different from the show, so nothing along those lines. Mm. Okay. And Ivan Soto said the show is barely based on the books. The show is very different. The show would have just said that it's the end of 
one adventure in the beginning of the next one. Okay, that uh-huh. makes sense. Cool. Okay. That's that's very cool then. Nice to know. Thank you guys for participating. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get in to our final boss move of the season. Boss move of the, of the season? week, but our final one of the season. <laughs> Thank you. Cherry, you want to start us off? First of all, you know I'm going to talk about my queen. Hey, girl. Lorena. Octavia taking the knee, taking one for the team, taking one for one group. Yes, girl. That is what a leader does. Like yes. Oh, man, Maddie is the boss of bosses at this point, right? She is the boss of bosses. She is the boss of bosses at this time, uh, at this point. I think her whole conversation with Clark, I think when she comes up with a new plan Mm. to save everybody, you know, and then that one moment when she sees that her plan worked and she picks up the sword and says, charge, that's her, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to give mine to Monty and Harper, but uh, Monty and Harper really took one for the team and lived a long and happy life together, which was beautiful. Um, Thank you. Very bittersweet. (laughs) Um, As far as fan shoutouts go, last week we had some great comments on our prediction, special prediction episode. Jay Films and Brianna Chavez, thank you for commenting and watching. Let's get into some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. All right. Would you like to go first? Well, uh, yeah, I think a uh, little bit of news. So Richard Harmon, dude that plays John Murphy, was doing a whole, it took over the hundreds Instagram today. Woo. Yeah. That's, uh, that's him up there. I apologize for my tardiness, but I'm here now. John Murphy takeover. <laughs> it's season five finale day today. I hope everyone's ready for one last ride. We are, Murphy. Like, for now. I apologize for my tardiness. That's amazing. <laughs> He's so fun. He is very fun. Well, I have two gossip news. Let's hear them. Well, I have three, really. Oh. First one is Monty's goodbye note, which is Christopher Larkin says, love to the entire 100 family for an incredible run. In case you weren't aware, you've all changed my life as well. This is Monty Green signing off. May we meet again? Oh, I'm going to cry. And we definitely want to meet you again, Christopher. So I'll definitely be checking out your IMDb for upcoming projects. And uh, today it was announced, sort of, the 100 season sits will premiere sometime in the spring between January and May 2019. (laughs) That's the most... (laughs) Like Between generic January timeline and May. Whatever. Next spring, I can Somewhere. live with that. I could have a baby between that time. Mm. You know, hey. And Wait, then <laughs> Kane isn't dying, we believe. We believe he's going to survive. And the actor that plays Kane is going to be on a new show called The Crossing. So he'll be juggling oh. TV shows. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Love when our little hundred people get more work. Love seeing them everywhere. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, let's get into some quick predictions for season six. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. All right, do you guys have anything wild that you're thinking? I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully some people in the um, chat will also give us some predictions. Yeah. What I think is that the Allegis three found that planet that they ended up going to. They tried to reach out to people, because they, but they couldn't. They were having a war. And it'll turn out that they're down there living their lives, being happy, and that our new people will be the Sky Crew causing trouble and mess and being themselves. Ah, nice. That You stole my prediction. Because, yeah, I figure that the, the Legis crew people have already set up some sort of colony out there, right? They have they got away from the Earth because everybody was screwing it up anyway, and it was gonna gonna blow up. So uh, you notice that Monty said that they broke off contact, right? Um, so yeah, I think there's just gonna be another war with Scott with a whole new Sky Crew <laughs> and a whole new Grounders. I agree. I uh, that's kind of what I was thinking too because I don't think there's any way that they're gonna be alone. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely think there's going to be another enemy or another person they have to kind of fight against. This is also maybe a really, really weird one, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I actually maybe felt sparks between Diaz and Octavia. I don't know about <laughs> you guys, but I felt chemistry there, and I'm sort of into exploring that, um, yeah. but that might just be me and might just be like a weird, hopeful thing, but I'm, I'm sort of 
against it. I'm sort of into that. Um, <laughs> I don't cool, know. Man. Okay, it's awesome. Sure they might have a polymorous relationship between Kane and Abby and everything. We have a couple of predictions in the chat. Uh -huh. Oh, and I was corrected. Ivan says that the show is the passage, not the crossing. My bad. I apologize. Mm. Um, no Eyes Bunny says there are people on this planet. Ivan says, Ivan Soto says, Bellamy and Clark finally get together. The better. Derek Hogan, I'm surprised no one on the panel joked how Dioza has been pregnant for 225 years. <laughs> <laughs> this poor girl! Please deliver the baby! I'm begging you! Oh, that's She's hilarious. like an elephant! Oh my god! <laughs> this poor that's girl. hilarious. That is funny. That, that's I'll, gonna be the oldest baby, baby ever. <laughs> I'll tell you what I what I would really like to see in the new season, um, in stuff that we saw in the first couple of seasons, but like some new creatures. Oh, okay. New planet. Let's have some new creatures, man. Yeah, remember, that'd be cool. like remember that that crazy panther creature from the first season. Yeah, there were some really and, crazy ones. And the horses and the and and that had the weird. Yeah, man, I'd like to see some of that. I'm here, I'm here for that. Uh. Nikki M says Elgis three were enslaved by the people of that planet. <gasps> oh snap! Ooh. Yeah, maybe there's more than one group. Ooh. And they could be humanoid, but not human human, because it's not exactly like Earth. It's Earth equivalent. Yeah, I think we're really going. What if to... it's a planet full of elves? What? You remember elves? The Hobbit. I never no. cared for <laughs> I don't know, guys. Um, but I think we're going into in uncharted territory, and I'm super excited to see what they're going to do next. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to leave a comment, and because um, we have so much time between now and the next one, and we definitely want to keep in contact um, and keep connecting with you. Where can everyone find you guys until spring 2019? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment, uh, so on all of my social media, you can find me at the El Jorge. That is the, and then the letters E L, and then my name Jorge. Uh, I'm also doing two other AfterBuzz shows. Uh, what are we at? Uh, Castle Rock on Wednesday nights, and uh, the Queen of the Self on uh, Thursday nights. Awesome. Yeah. You can find me Cherry at Cherry underscore L A on Twitter and on Instagram. Awesome. You guys can find me on Twitter at Alphaba underscore and on Instagram at Taylor underscore Gates underscore. I also host the Younger After Show, the Law and Order SVU After Show, and the Sacred Lives Facebook Watch After Show, so catch me there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been such a fun season, and we will see you spring 2019. Until yes. then, keep it 100. Wow. Love ya. <laughs> Kisses. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. Views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.